Now I mentioned at the start that I was going to introduce uh, the idea of a forest plot as many systematic reviews are s the data from a systematic review is summarized in this thing called a forest plot and this is a forest plot you can see here. This was produced by one of the first uh, authors in the oral health group um, Jane Harrison who's based in Liverpool uh, and they produced this review in 2001 and as I say this was one of the first systematic reviews produced by the oral health group so if I show you this review in some, uh, this uh, forest plot in some detail if you look at the top here this is the name of the review so it's the orthodontic treatment for posterior crossbites this is one aspect of the review is looking at whether the intervention of grinding the teeth in the mixed dentition will lead to the correction of a posterior crossbite in the permanent dentition. And you can see the comparison is between uh, those who had received grinding and those who were a control, had no treatment. The outcome here is whether the crossbite was still present in the permanent dentition. So looking at the results of the review we've got one study here Linda 1989. These are the data here so we had two groups in this study. One group was random, randomly allocated to receive grinding of the primary canine in the mixed dentition and you can see there was a total number of 38 in this group and this figure here tells you that there were 19 individuals in this group who still had a, a unilateral posterior crossbite in the permanent dentition uh, following grinding of the primary canine. The second group here was a control group. So again they had a, a posterior unilateral crossbite in the mixed dentition but they were randomly allocated to receive no treatment so they did not receive the intervention which was grinding. Again you can see there were a total number of 38 in this group uh, of which 32 still had a posterior crossbite in the permanent dentition. So you can do uh, a fairly simple calculation here called an odds ratio where you look at the proportions with the outcome in the two group uh, and you turn, end up with an odds ratio here. Now if there was no difference between the two groups then you would end up with an odds ratio of 1. So that's why this line is highlighted here. An odds ratio of 1 means there will be no difference in the proportion of the outcome that you're interested in um, at the end of your experimental period. But you can see that the odds ratio is much lower than 1 uh, and you can tell that from the, pro the uh, proportions here because about half that received the intervention of grinding did not go on to have a um, crossbite in the permanent dentition whereas you can see that uh, just six individuals here uh, did not have the outcome of interest in the control group. So the odds ratio suggests that grinding does lead to a reduction of uh, posterior crossbites in the permanent dentition. However you also have to look at this line here. This is the confidence interval. You've probably heard about confidence intervals from previous lectures. The confidence interval is a way of establishing how confident you are that your sample is representative of the population. So whenever we undertake a, an experimental study, we can't look at every individual who has a posterior unilateral crossbite in the, in the mixed dentition. It would be impossible to examine everyone. So we take a sample, we take a number of individuals who have that condition and look at those, and we then assume that our data are representative of everyone who has, uh, in this particular case, a, a posterior crossbite in the mixed dentition. But whenever you take a sample, 
there is some uncertainty about whether that sample is representative of the population. And this confidence interval is a mathematical way of expressing that uncertainty. So we have an odds ratio here of uh, 0 0.22, but actually the true value, if we were to take another sample, it may be um, higher than that, it may be um, 0.3 or 0.4, uh, or it may be lower than that, so it may get down to, to 0.1 or less than that. So we know that the true value is somewhere along this line, uh, this confidence interval line here. But the important thing is you can see that this line, this confidence interval, does not cross the line of no difference. It does not cross uh, a value of 1. So we are fairly confident that this, in this study, the data shows that there is a statistical, statistically significant difference between the grinding group and the non-grinding group. And we can say that the data from this study suggest that grinding is an effective way of reducing the incidence of posterior crossbites in the permanent dentition. However, it is only one study carried out in one centre in one country by one individual. And in order to confirm that finding, we would have to carry out more studies. And that's where uh, a meta-analysis comes in. This is a definition by Huck in 1988. So a meta-analysis is defined here as a statistical analysis of the results from independent studies, which generally aims to produce a single estimate of treatment effect. And I'll illustrate here with, with this forest plot. This is a, another Cochrane systematic review. Again, you can look at the title here. Fluoride toothpaste for preventing dental caries in children and adolescents. The comparison is fluoride toothpaste versus placebo. And the outcome is whether they had extrinsic tooth staining uh, at the end of the experimental period. In this instance, you can see there are five studies. There are five studies that are of, of in a sufficiently similar area of interest with a similar outcome, population, uh, and way of measuring that outcome that their data can be combined together to get an overall result. And you can see by doing that, you increase your sample size considerably. Uh, so we have five studies here uh, carried out in different, pop in different samples, different populations, different individuals, uh, and you can see they can be combined in a meta-analysis to get an overall result here. And because the, that increases the size of your sample, it increases your generalizability, you're more confident that, in this case, um, the outcome, which is extrinsic tooth staining, that those who received the intervention of fluoride toothpaste had a higher chance of extrinsic tooth staining than the control group. And this shows it quite nicely with the forest plot here. In this case, you can see that the uh, uh, risk difference, slightly different measurement to the odds ratio, is over to the right, which favours the control rather than the toothpaste. 